Hi, you are listening to Creatrix Culture. I am your host, Sarah Lottie. And today we have the ever magical, beautiful, fairy-like goddess, <laughs> Melissa Russo, sitting down with us. And we are going to talk all things essential oils and young living. And I'm excited for this episode because I met Melissa now, let's see, I believe it was August of last year because we took... We met through the Tony Robbins community. We were both in um, UPW together and end up on a, 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 a side group. And I was just talking about my journey in life um, is I'll be going, going, going. Everything will be great. I start PMSing and anything I'm working on, I just tank and, and it all goes to crap. So on the forum, I was talking about what do you all do to keep in, in what Tony Robbins calls a peak state? or to keep going during your cycle, because I, I'll find I would lose momentum or I'll lose interest or all these things. And, um, and how my PMS works for me is, is like all these different symptoms. Like I just not, it's a more of a mental thing and, and, and exhaustion rather than like cramps and physical stuff. And, and leading up to it, I'll get very like mind scrambled and lose my thoughts and uh, get tongue tied very easily. And I just, I'd never found a way to fully balance that out. And then Melissa just wrote a beautiful comment. She said, I might have something to help you. And we t talked on the phone and giggled for at least, I think a half an hour. It may have been even longer. It was yeah. a magical conversation. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Like we instantly connected and it was a beautiful connection. And then she explained to me of this one oil that Young Living has that can potentially help you uh, balance out your hormones. And so I got it. And I have to say for me personally, it has been magic and a staple in my life and has evened me out and helped me get through times where I would have these highs and lows to bring me to a more even point. And what I found through this um, is that my progesterone levels were off and, and this oil has personally helped me bring it to a level to even it out um, and balance me out. So I no longer have these really big highs and lows. And that has been my introduction. I would have to say even to essential oils in general, because as we were just talking on here before I hit record is that essential oils were like a little bit on my path. You know, you have your lavender, you have your rose, you have your little things, you know, um, but I never knew that there's such a deeper world and education and benefit to uh, bringing essential oils deeper into your life. And so that's why I thought it would be really fun today to bring Melissa on because she is a plethora of knowledge on so many different levels about the company of Young Living in general and essential oils and all the benefits that they can have in your life. So we're just going to run with this. We're going to probably be going down many different avenues. So sit back and listen and or watch this beautiful fairy-like being who has graced my life with so much sunshine. Hi, Melissa. What an introduction. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> and you have graced my life as well, for sure. I'm so grateful that um, we had that chance meeting. Yes. <laughs> So, um, how long now I, have you been with Young Living and how did it kind of come uh, across your path? Uh, I definitely resonate with what you said about, oh, I thought there was lavender and maybe rose. Um, the first time somebody came at me with, and I will use the words came at me with <laughs> an oil, I was like, no, no, everything gives me a headache. No. Um, I mean, even just walking down the detergent aisle of the grocery store, I would get a dull headache. And they were like, no, these are different. And I very reluctantly used some oils because I had something, something going on. But I have to say I was annoyed. <laughs> was annoyed at this woman coming at me telling me to put this here and put this there and lick this I'm like what is happening but I was a little desperate um feeling terrible and by the next morning I was not wow and I and then I was very interested I'm like tell me about whatever was <laughs> tell me about what you gave me and um <laughs> was being diffused last night because 
um, I had a quite, quite a turnaround of how I was feeling and definitely did not have a headache. Usually I'm very sensitive to scents and I realize now the big difference between perfume oils and these higher quality oils. Um, but I've been with Young Living for almost a decade now. Wow. And I am so grateful it came across my path because it has blessed me in so many ways. <laughs> the community, um, I never meant to make it into a business and it just happened because I couldn't shut up about, <laughs> about what was going on. And it brought my health to a whole new level too because it was the first time that I was introduced to the lifestyle factor of environmental toxins. I know most people think of Young Living and essential oils, but it really is a lifestyle that educates people about having less toxins in their life. Mm -hmm. I studied biobehavioral health in college and I learned all about stress at that time. It was in the late nineties, <laughs> dating myself. And the big thing then was cortisol and what stress does. And we did a lot of studies um, with, with immune support and things like that. And <laughs> of course I was a, a college student being paid $5 to see what would happen if I pet a dog for five minutes or just sat in a room with a dog. So they're, and they were swabbing the inside of my mouth. So there's all of these really interesting studies um, <laughs> with cortisol. So after I graduated from college, I proceeded to become a certified yoga teacher and did all kinds of different body work modalities to help people with self-care and manage their stress. And I was extremely, and I still am extremely passionate about that. But here I am, teaching yoga, meditating regularly, eating almost all organic food, having good sleep and a lot of really good yogic lifestyle um, attributes, but I was smearing toxins all over my body daily in my lotions and my makeup and the cleaning products and not even thinking about what effect it would have on me or my cat because they're even more sensitive and absorbing all the things that you're cleaning the floors with through their little paws and things like that. Mm -hmm. And that was a game changer for me. And you were talking about your hormones and there are so many endocrine disrupting chemicals that are in our personal care products, mm -hmm. our cleaning products, our makeup, so women are even more prone since they often do more of the cleaning to a lot of these chemicals. And I became extremely passionate about the preventative measures of balancing our hormones just by cleaning up our environments. Mm -hmm. So that was a long answer. <laughs> that was a beautiful. No, that was perfect because it is, it is really important. Um, and people really don't know just in that uh, the environmental um the environmental toxins that are that are being bombarded at us on on so many levels like when you step in the shower when you brush your teeth when you just windex your window to when you know um and it's affecting yourself it's affecting your family it's affecting your pets and it's affecting you on so many levels within your body that it's it's almost like mind blowing um that i do believe that so many of our ailments at this point in in our evolution and and the lives that we that the lives that we live um we could you could cut that i don't even i don't have any percentages i don't know if you have any percentages but by large percentages by just cutting out those those toxins. I know years ago, my friends would make fun of me because I took out all the, um, all the cleaning product, toxic cleaning products out of my home. The only thing I left was Drano and bleach. And I can't even have bleach around me. If I even smell bleach, I instantly get like red in the face, but every now and then I do a little bleach of the shower and that's it. And that's like once every six months, maybe, you know, um, but other than that, now, uh, now I use the young living cleaning supplies, um, 
but I was with other, I used other companies up until I met you. And it, I, I, I wasn't, um, even though they said they're clean, sometimes you don't know fully how clean, I couldn't find the full information. So it was like, once I learned about Young Living, then I'm like, okay, here it is. Um, so yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I think when you clean up your food, you clean up your environment, you can clean, you can start by cleaning up the process within, within your body for sure. So let's talk about that. What, how do, how does Young Living specifically in this company alone put you in that, in that right direction of cleaning up? Well, when I got involved with Young Living, it was, I was very adamant. I'm just in this for the oils because they had other things like this weird red drink everybody was talking about and all these personal care products. And I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to be sold. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah. I like these oils, but I don't want any of this other stuff. <laughs> and I think the first time I put an order in, they give you, um, they give you little gifts if your orders reach a certain amount. So the first month that I ordered, I got this beautiful starter kit that had 12 oils that I was extremely excited about. And then I saw there was um, a scriptural oil kit and I'm like, well, I need that too. <laughs> So very quickly, I, I qualified for some of these promos. Uh -huh. and, um, <laughs> and so one of them was a digestive enzyme. And I just, I got it. I'm like, oh, I have to put this somewhere. And I threw it in my cabinet. <laughs> well, about a few weeks later, because they realized you might be needing these before the holidays. I think I ordered in, in October. And a few weeks later was Thanksgiving and I ate a whole bunch of food that I wasn't used to eating sugar and pie and carbs and who As knows a, a lot of processed food that I wasn't used to eating and I came home because I just felt so terrible and I just wanted to go to sleep and I remembered oh you have some kind of weird digestive enzyme in your cabinet <laughs> so I, I took two of them and in a couple of minutes, I felt great. Wow. And I'm like, huh. Huh. <laughs> so all of a sudden I was open to the supplements. <laughs> uh huh. And it was honestly the first time that I felt a difference because I've taken digestive enzymes before. Nothing happened. And I've taken vitamins my whole life. My mom was always into, into vitamins and, you know, starting with the Flintstones and the little yeah. I, always, I only wanted the, you know, ones though. So <laughs> and I only wanted but, the purple ones. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know it's purple? Okay. So we had the same one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who got stuck with Fred, but right. nonetheless, I really, I never really noticed a difference taking vitamins, even though I'm sure they they're great. I'm not putting down any kind of any other company or any other vitamins. Glad I got what I did. But I honestly started noticing a difference taking these vitamins that I was taking all different ones and supplements. And apparently most supplements you only absorb maybe 10 to 15%. Okay. And when you're taking a good one, it could be up to 50%. So there's definitely different, different Level. levels. Yep. And quantities, and, I assume. Right. That, and, yeah. and I've heard interesting stories from people that clean out, um, job johnnies i don't know if that's what you guys call them here but you know the little portable toilets oh, the porta potties yeah <laughs> and how at, at the bottom of all of the porta potties are our supplements Whoa. <laughs> sometimes don't even break down so quality is important or else you could be flushing your money and hopes of being you know having supplements down the toilet literally but um with young living supplements they they say that you absorb 85 percent within the first hour Oh, wow. And that's because there's essential oils in all of the supplements that help with the bioavailability. So I was shocked. I definitely started to notice a difference um, as I started integrating things like the supplements and that weird red drink everybody was drinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For example, I no longer take naps. Now that's my experience. Everybody yeah. is different. So right. I can't make any claims. I don't want to... Um, I don't want to make any, and I want to stay FDA compliant. Um, 
but yes, I could definitely say from my own experience, I no longer take naps. I didn't know how people had nine to five jobs because I scheduled my clients and my yoga classes around my naps. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> like, how do people work all day? Right. Oh my God. I could totally see you being like that too. <laughs> like, even though you no longer take naps, I can see that old you <laughs> scheduled the nap. Like, definitely. A hundred percent. Oh yeah. What a luxury though. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I actually learned about uh, my mom. There was another, and and I I know we wanted to talk about network marketing um, briefly. So I wanted, before we touch on that, uh, when I was young, I learned about this uh, company, this network. It was a network, it was a drug sales company, and my mom, that my mom bought vitamins through. And I learned that very young about um, if a lot of stuff that we buy, in the you know retail store the quality is a lot of the, like i learned about vitamins back then like the majority of the vitamins that you're going to go get at your retail stores your you know the it they don't absorb in your body i learned that very young from my mom mm-hmm. um from this other company and that that i was kind of stuck in my head so through my like i've been involved in network marketing now for eight years, almost, yeah, eight years, um, a little over eight years. And that's one thing that I've learned through these companies that I've aligned with and have learned uh, just in the different products and the different things that I've been involved in is a lot of times what you're getting in the store is not as high as quality, is not even as good for you, but there's such a stigma around direct sales network marketing companies when a lot of times some of these companies out here, the products are like a hundred times better than and safer and cleaner and actually are more powerful for, for your health and wellness and well-being than something you might buy in a store and you but you're 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 led to believe that when you're it's it's you can trust it more when it's from a store. And it's kind of sad that people that are in network marketing who get it. And then the people that are not can have a, such a misconception about what it is because they had, you know, Johnny on the spot over there who really was pushing, pushing, pushing them for them to like start a business or do this, that they just kind of shut down to the world altogether. And they instantly think, oh, that's a pyramid scheme or, oh, that it's this and that When The majority of the company that are above board, they're they're compliant on the, they're part of the direct sales association. They, they're not a pyramid scheme. They wouldn't be able to function if they were a pyramid scheme. And if we could get past this misconception or this judgment or what, you know, misinformation, you can be opened up to a world of products that are really beneficial to your life, your health, and if you choose to do it as a business, your bank account. So I would love for you, I know you, you wanted to say some stuff about network marketing in general, and I'd love for you to touch on that. You said it beautifully. And it breaks my heart sometimes when people turn something down because, because they think it's a pyramid scheme. I actually did a hour long presentation on network marketing, not my company, just network marketing in general to educate people about what it is because because of that kind of reaction. Oh, that's an MLM. The thing is, it's just a marketing strategy. Instead of the company paying advertisers, they're paying whatever they call their independent distributors or brand partners or affiliates for their sales. They're using the same amount they would be paying for for advertising to pay us. Mm -hmm. And it's actually pretty ingenious because they're only paying us for sales actually made. Like imagine having a billboard that you only had to pay for every time somebody called the 800 number on there. It's an ingenious marketing strategy, Mm -hmm. but Young Living chose it because there was so much education to go along with their product. You can't just give somebody a bottle of thieves oil, for example and not explain how to use it and the safety around it. Mm -hmm. That part was very important. And that's why they chose network marketing to serve the people they were 
they were producing the products for. Right. Um, so instead of you going into, let's say, CVS and you're like picking up your little bottle of thieves oil and there might be a little description of directions on the back that you may or may not read. And then you go home and you have a, let's say something happens or whatever. Or you're not even using it properly. You're not even using it to its fullest benefit where having that one-on-one, -on -one, having that direct contact with the consultant or whatever, many different companies call them different things, you get a more hands-on educational experience to them properly being able to use it to its full benefit, which had I never met you, I don't know if I would even know half the things I know about essential oils at this point. And I know, I don't even know anything still, you know, um, and I'm, I'm excited to continue to, to learn with you um, and what we're going to discuss later in this show. But yeah, so that is like, it's a really beautiful thing. I would love you to continue to go down that path of what you were saying. Thank you for sharing that because it's my absolute joy to kind of pay it forward and share. I mean, what's the first thing that we do as soon as we're excited about anything? We want to share it because it ex it expands the joy we feel around it. Mm -hmm. And that's how my business got built by accident <laughs> because I just wanted to help other people because I was seeing such a difference in my life. And what a beautiful thing to mm -hmm to have it bless me as well as other people. So I'm so happy you feel that way. But, um, but yes, I mean, I'm, if anyone came into this podcast and had that stigma about MLMs or pyramid schemes, I just invite you to question it because I personally know people, single moms that have put their kids through school mm -hmm. with certain companies. And yes, there's crappy companies out there. Absolutely. If somebody wants you to buy thousands of dollars worth of product that you may or may not sell. And that that's, that's kind of a red flag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but there's, and, and so I know people have been burned that way and that's right. not or all been burned in the sense they have somebody who brought them in, who's so pushy. And so I know a lot of people mm -hmm. get turned off by that too, just kind of feel like over powered. So yeah, I mean, but that goes in any business, you know, that goes in anything we do. There's like the, there's the good. And then there's like the, you know, you might have a bad experience or maybe you're just with the wrong company, you know, right. maybe it's just, you don't even feel fully a hundred percent passionate about that. I just, you know, decided recently to cut ties with a company I'd been with for a very long time because I just realized we weren't vibrationally in alignment anymore with each other. And I didn't believe in their products as much as I did. And I wasn't really into the culture, like the whole thing. It just like, I had to come to terms with instead of hanging on to this thing because I didn't want to give up and just realize, no, shift your focus, go more towards things that you're now in alignment. Maybe you were once in alignment with that company, but you're not in alignment with them anymore. And other things like this, like, you know, this whole new world of essential oils is like, piquing my interest is opening me up like this is now this you're just more alignment over here which is really and that's beautiful. a beautiful thing the culture and the community of these of these companies are something that you're not going to get in a product that's just on a shelf and so many of these wonderful there's a lot of great network marketing companies out there and so many of them also have a really powerful mission and foundations and are doing incredible work in the world and that's one thing that I'm excited about with, um, with the company I'm involved with. But yeah, so just to wrap it up, if, if anybody came in with those kind of misconceptions, just do a little more digging. Yeah. Because it's, it's an incredible, beautiful industry. And whether you're just a customer with these, with these products or if you're interested in making it a business, I don't think there's any better way to, to go to start your own business. There's no startup fees as far as branding and, and research and development and creating a product. And there's already a system in place that has been proven. Eric Worre has an amazing documentary called Rise of the Entrepreneur. And I used a lot of his information when I did my network marketing, what is it? Um, video well, you send me that link and we'll put it in the show notes so people Fantastic. can can uh, access that yes absolutely <laughs> so yeah so he he gives a lot of great information and 
Um, there was something else I was going to say about it. And I just encourage people like, you know, I find even too, I'll, I'll tell people like, oh, I found this, you know, amazing thing. And I'll tell them about it. And then I'll say what it is. And they're like, oh, is that network marketing? Or is that, oh, da, 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 you know, and it's like, you just, this, like we're going back the stigma that's around it. You just were so interested in something and so peaked. And then because of that really ugly stigma, then they just shut down. And I just encourage people to, to go past that, to still like be open to, you don't, not everyone has to start a business and not, you know, not even everyone has to buy it. But if I was so shut down to you reaching out to me, and like I said, I, I wasn't looking for anything about essential oils at all in my life. Um, Cause I've seen young living out there and the doTERRAs and the, this and the, that, you know what I mean? And I've heard bad and good stories about everybody. And I just like, before I was just like, eh, you know, that's just, it's not, no one ever even approached me, but even just in my own thing, I'm like, that's not for me, but I didn't have any information. Right. So if you would have came at me and said, I had something for you that could help you with, you know, balancing out your hormones could help you. And, uh, the minute, you know, you said, blah, blah, blah. And I just shut it down. Like that is such a disservice I would have done for myself because of the changes that I've had by just using this one little bottle of something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that's what I really get. I personally get frustrated about with people when they, they instantly, and this goes for many areas of life. This just doesn't go with network marketing when they just don't hear you out. They don't let you get past that, that one point that they just instantly go to someone told them once that that was a pyramid or someone told them once, you know, instead of being open and, and going further past that, that stigma, past that thing, um, mm -hmm. to find out what's really on the other side, because if it hadn't been for the other company I was with a long time ago, I would have never known about all the toxins we were putting on our skin and all this stuff. And they were the ones that taught me about all these environmental factors. They change like, yes, now I'm shifting gears. Right. But if I hadn't said yes to them a long time ago, I would never would have found out about all this stuff. And even though innately I was making somewhat healthy choices, but then it opened up my world to make bigger healthy choices. And yeah. so, you know, so I just encourage people to just keep a little bit of an open mind when it comes to this, you know, even if you find that person approaching you is kind of annoying, they might actually have some gold and some information or, and they, or they really generally want to help you and can help you. And no, just it's interesting because when I share, oh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but when I share, okay. I'm not trying to make a sale. In fact, so often I, sh I, I take the time and I share with people that are already members on different teams. Like I just am honestly trying to help people have healthier, happier lives. That's right. It. And what was and interesting just to take that back. Cause I thought in the same thread on that, on that group, there was another girl, um, you know, part of the Tony Robbins community. And I just remember she said, oh, I take this and just sent a link to this, this, this oil from Young Living. Didn't tell me anything. Oh, this saved me with my PMS. That's all she said. Sent a link. You were like, let's have a conversation. And you called me and we laughed and we giggled for a very long time. And then you actually educated me on, hey, this is something you might want to look into. Your progesterone levels might be a little low. Do because you not everybody this? do you experience that do you, it wasn't if this might not have been the product for me if exactly. you didn't ask me but this you know what I mean and that was such a difference to I never would have bought from that girl ever because she didn't educate me I don't know anything about essential oils you didn't even tell me how it helps with your PMS you know what I mean and like I just think it's such a beautiful thing that then I was led to you who's such a plethora of information but also educated me on my own self and like, that's the, that's the true beauty of network marketing. It's people that are so passionate and there are those people in every company that really understand the product, what they can do for you, how they can help you. You know, Susie Joe behind the counter at CVS in the pharmacy, she didn't care. She didn't know. All she knows is that she can maybe give you a pharmaceutical that might put a bandaid on your ailment, but might not go on a deeper healing aspect, you know?
So that is the really gorgeous thing about this business. When you do find an alignment to people that really actually care about what they're doing and they generally know there is a misconception. It's not just about you getting you to be a business partner or getting you to just buy the product. It is generally genuine people that really care and want to help people if it is financially on that aspect or for your overall health, you know? So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you that, that you did make a difference to me. And that is why I ended up buying the product over someone else, you know, and they came first, but they didn't take that extra time or that extra step to really connect with me. But that's because clearly we we're meant to do this anyway. <laughs> oh, it's, our connection is so magical. And I, I just have to also say to be FDA compliant, you know, we're not claiming that anything is going to stop any kind of disease or, or issue or. Right. Yeah. We and and in fact, the only thing I could legally say about that oil you keep talking about is that it might, might be nice for your skin. <laughs> like that's it. FDA compliancy. Yeah. It's great for my skin. <laughs> oh boy but yes I but it is interesting you were talking about vitamins and the cleaning products and you know people often trust what's on the store shelves because it's on the store shelves and it's I've learned so much with um with my education around all of this is that so many vitamins don't even have to disclose what the ingredients are in them. And I know you were saying some of the cleaning products that you were looking at seemed green, but you couldn't really find the information about, about what might be in them. And a lot of things that are on the shelf, I always felt that same way. If they're on the shelf, they're safe. Not the case, especially, well, at least in the United States, because yeah. I think in the United States, I think the number may have went from 11 to 12 banned ingredients in our personal yeah. care and it used to be cleaning eight. products. Like eight years ago, when I started with the other company, it was eight. They only banned eight, uh, eight chemicals that they deemed as unsafe. When the European Union back then was, I think, 1300. It might be now 1315 or 1400 at this point. Yes. And also, I learned that. Um, uh, it, when you're reading ingredients, if there's fragrance on the label or flavor, that those are umbrella words and they can hide anything that they want in those words because they deem those as trade secrets. And in some thing that went down a long time ago with the FDA, they're like, well, we still need to like have a part of our ingredients not being able to show to the public because I mean, obviously it's so nobody steals or whatever, but they can legitimately hide anything they want under those umbrella words. So education around that, what we're sharing right now, just that little snippet could be one of the most powerful things that I've learned on this journey. Yeah. And, and also companies can say anything when it comes to the cosmetic and personal care industry. When you buy, and I know some people still know that organic is, oh, because the farmer next door could be using, could right. be using chemicals, or it only takes a few years to technically convert from conventional to organic farming. And that is nowhere near the amount of time that you need to clean the soil of those, of those toxins and pesticides and herbicides and things like that. So even organic is um, not necessarily a great standard but at least we know that certain standards have been met in that. But if somebody says organic on a cosmetic, on a, on a shampoo or conditioner, even on an essential oil, the only company that has given them that standard is themselves. Wow. It does not exist. Wow. And you can say you have a 100% pure organic essential oil and it could be 80% synthetic. They could just be using floral water to be that very small percentage they need in order to call it a 100% pure essential oil. And the floral water is the byproduct of the distillation process, the byproduct that most Young Living Farms and distilleries just, I, I think I soaked in jacuzzi water of... <laughs> 
that they have some spas in some of the um, distilleries where you could soak in the floral water because it's just a byproduct. It might smell nice, but it doesn't have any of the compounds that a really high quality, pure essential oil would have to actually give you a benefit. So if you're looking for a lavender oil that might help you get a better night's sleep and create a calming environment, you're looking for the compounds to be a certain a certain standard. And the floral water does not have any of those compounds, but it smells nice. And that's often what you're getting in perfume essential oils, which wow. is fascinating. And things could be absolutely synthetic in there as well and undisclosed. And that goes for our the green washing that happens in a lot of the personal care products and even cleaning products out there. The front looks really good <laughs> as far as what they're saying. Um, flip it around, look at the ingredients, but sometimes, as you said, the ingredients don't even need to be disclosed. So mm -hmm. we have to do our own research. Yeah. That being said, um, on let's talk about uh, Young Living specifically then with their oils and their standards. And I know we wanted to segue, however, we want to segue this into um, also with pets and the, the, the misconception that you know, these oils will kill your pets, but I know we have a whole thing. I want you just to take it away on, on, on Young Living's, uh, you know, quality and policy and what the standards and how them especially are so much safer for us of, you know, ingesting and pr like the whole thing just let's give like you know a few minutes on a few short or long whatever you feel um on on everything young living and their and their standards in their personal uh essential oils well before i started sharing i wanted to make sure this company was legit it had definitely helped me the products that i was using and i was not going to stop but i needed to have a clear conscious conscious of if I'm going to share, I want to know what this company is all about. And I got to go to a few corporate events and meet the founders and visit farms. <laughs> so when you're actually standing on a farm and you see that there really is standards that are higher than anything I've ever seen. I know we mentioned regular organic farms and how it only takes three or four years to switch over from organic, from conventional to organic. Young Living only plants on virgin soil or land that has been free of any kind of conventional farming for 50 years. So people ask if the oils are organic and I say it's beyond organic. That standard is, is too low. And we are the only company that has their own farms and distilleries because it's not just important as to how something was grown, but when and how it was harvested. They have to be certain times of day. <laughs> They're so specific for some of these plants. And it's a really beautiful relationship, not only how they're harvested, but they won't allow people on the, like, on the land harvesting if they're in a bad mood. Wow. <laughs> I was at a farm and they and they were talking about something that happened a few weeks earlier how two of the workers were arguing and and Gary was there um and saw what was happening and the next day used it as a lesson he brought everybody out into the field and asked the two that were arguing to reenact what was happening um, yesterday, which was pretty easily easy because it was pretty fresh. Mm -hmm. And so he said, okay, now harvest, harvest that crop right there. And he compared it to a crop that was harvested before that different energy around it. Yeah. And the amount of oil that they got and the quality of the oil they got was not to their standards with what was harvested in that energy of the argument of the two people. Wow. So we're talking about things that are really being brought down to a solid level. 
and with standards that are higher than anything I've ever experienced. So they do test the product themselves as well as send it out to a third party to be tested because if the compounds don't reach those levels that we were talking about earlier, you won't see it. They'll either dump it or sell it to a third party. Wow. Mm -hmm. And if they're, if it's, if it's not pure, they'll dump it. If it was somehow contaminated in the process, they will, they will dump it. But if it just doesn't meet their standards, they'll sell it to another company. Wow. So I know there are companies out there saying, we get our oil from the same farms. I'm like, stuff that we don't take. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you're getting the, the argument batch that's lower in vibration. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So if you're looking for an oil to have the properties to support, like we said, a better night's sleep or support your immune system or support your digestive system, the potency is just as important as the purity. So wow. that is, it's really beautiful to hear, especially nowadays with people and companies, the integrity, I feel like in, in everyone just wanting to make money, make money, make money. Um, and so many things, the integrity is completely so low and out of balance. And to hear that there's companies out there that are still very passionate about keeping the integrity high and walking in their integrity, I think is, is so commendable and huge. Um, and, and I feel like that's why I've felt like such an alignment to to you and this company and everything, because I felt that energy of the integrity, because you can feel when things are out of integrity, or you can feel when things were integrity, and then something happened, and they go out of integrity, you know, and you can feel that shift. And, you know, that's, that's a whole other topic for another day about spirituality, vibration, integrity, mm -hmm. and, and that everything is vibration. So being that the men in the fields, that is an, a very important thing when you study energetics and vibration and energy of how that bleeds into, into everything. And you don't think it does. You think like just turning to someone and freaking out at them and then walking on doesn't affect the environment, doesn't affect the structures and the molecules within that person and within your, you know what I mean? Self. And like it, it we're so much more connected on this than, than we're led to believe on this whole structure. So to be aligned with a company that understands that first and foremost, and then has the integrity to see that out is huge. And in this day and age, I would say close to unheard of. And I've seen over and over again, and it's not a slogan, <laughs> but it is catchy that everything that's been created with Young Living has been for a purpose and not a profit. Because I've met people that have been with Young Living for over 20 years. I've met the woman who said, this supplement was created for me. Gary created this for me because I was having this issue. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> and, you know, the whole, the whole freedom collection that we have was created for, um, for veterans that were returning that were having trouble sleeping and um, to help them support their emotions and everything has been created because there's a purpose. The Ninja Nitro that we have is this little energy shot mm -hmm. they, with ginseng in it. and doesn't have any artificial colors or flavors or sugars or anything. They made that because so many of the kids that you know were in Young Living Families started taking those energy drinks that were full of all kinds of who even knows? sugars. Right. Who I don't even like what is in Red Bull? Do we even know what's in Red Bull? Because I can't drink it. It gives me an instant stomach ache. It feels gross in the minute it hits my body. Or monster. Do we even know what's actually in these drinks? I don't know. I don't but, know. But I know I don't want to say anything. I'll I'll just do the disclaimer here. I don't want to yeah. say anything negative about any other company, but we right. were with but they created the nitro to give an alternative that was that was maybe a little healthier for um these teens that were all of a sudden wanting energy drinks mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful company and i'm i'm happy to align with it because they're doing good for a lot of people they've changed my life i see other people's lives being changed and they're doing a lot of wonderful work around the world the foundation if anybody's curious i know a lot of these great companies 
start out with, this is what our foundation does. So buy this so that you can help us do this. Usually people don't even know about the Young Living Foundation, but they are doing incredible things all around the world. And yeah, you could just go to younglivingfoundation.org to, to see. And the most beautiful thing um, is that 100% of any donations go directly to uh, the, the work that they do. So all of the administration fees, Young Living takes care of. Wow. So if, you're, if you want to earmark rounding up whatever you're ordering, 75 cents um and you want to earmark it for the organization that gives malaria kit um malaria pills to kids and adults that's enough for a kid's malaria medication i think wow. the adult like a dollar 25 so you know that a hundred percent of what you're giving is going directly to the people that are benefiting from it that i haven't heard of in any other nonprofits. No, and that was that's been my kind of problem with nonprofits is right there is is that integrity piece is like, okay, how much of this money is going to pay these people doing all this stuff in these offices and these jobs? And mm -hmm. how much of this money is actually going towards what they're saying that they're doing? And like, how do we even know that's even happening? So it's like, I kind of stopped giving money to things not mm -hmm. be an asshole. But because I was just like, I don't really know if my money is doing what they're saying it's doing. And that's like kind of a sad state of affairs to be in, in the first place, you know, but that once mm -hmm. again, goes back to the integrity of, of the people and the companies and the things that are out there. So once again, it's really nice to know, I'm going to start rounding up my orders or, or giving a little extra because, because of that. And I didn't know that. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Cause that's, that's beautiful. I'm sorry. I didn't share it earlier. <laughs> you might've, but I know, I know there's like, you know, different times, like when you're just trying to get so much information, like, you know, you retain mm -hmm. so much and then, you know, you, you very well could have said it. And then in my, like I said, like I said, essential oils were all kind of like new to me in my world when we met and like started this journey together that it just, you know, it's not something that registered at that moment, but. I don't think I knew about the Young Living Foundation until I went to my first convention. Oh, and they had, um, they gave a presentation on all the different organizations they were a part of or organizations they spearhead. I was blown away. It's really beautiful. Um, what, all, what are all the areas that Young Living covers um, for people to, to purchase from? Because they have the essential oils, obviously, then the cleaning and you were mm -hmm. talking about the nutrition. Is there any other areas that... And you said the personal care products, like the lotion. I haven't said that, but you, okay, yeah. So the personal care products, the lotions, the deodorants, they came out with makeup because that is often the number one toxic product that women use on a daily basis. So I always talk to people about switching to safer slowly and start with things you use every day. So start with your toothpaste, start with your deodorants. If that, if your toothpaste says, if you ingest more than a tablespoon of it to go to poison control, throw it away. <laughs> because even though Did you're not- Did you really say that? Yes. Whoa. Because even you're not following it, anyone that, that, most of us know, especially if you've done homeopathics, that sublingually you absorb even more quickly yeah. than, than putting something on your skin. So, or even swallowing. So yes. And if your deodorant has things in it like aluminum. Yeah. You want, you want to toss it. Yeah. Um, fluoride, and, get rid of your fluoride, open up that penile gland. <laughs> your, I know your it's controversial, but I feel in it. You, you, you yeah, done my, fucked up already right there. So you gotta <laughs> get that out. My, my naturopath would say how it really um, was the same weight of some of whatever helps regulate the thyroid. And that's why so many women had some thyroid issues because, because of the aluminum and the fluoride. One or the other, wow. but and nonetheless, of, a little side note on the, on the, on the, uh, thyroid is that, uh, iodine actually helps you balance out your thyroid, but that's why they took iodine out of something or it's, it's now like depleted from different stuff, how people were getting it like a hundred years ago. Then they were adding it into salt, but don't be mistaken that it's not enough iodine or even I think the right kind of iodine that's good for you. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so iodine, especially for women is a really big thing to add into your 
into your diet as taking some iodine because it, it really supports the thyroid. And I'm sure Young Living has other stuff to help support the thyroid, but that's something. Oh, I do love their thyroman supplement. It's a game changer. Really? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, But just to to wrap up um, the whole switch to things you use every day, some people just use makeup once in a while, but a lot of women use it every single day. So it took me about two years to switch out everything to safer products and start slowly or or do it all at once. Yeah. (laughs) If you can financially um, swing it, just get rid of all of it, <laughs> replace it. You know, if you need to do little bits, like just yeah, take the time to do to do the do's and switch it out, because you're going to be saving in the long run. You know, you really yeah, are. I'm, you might not I think, think so, but it's like that spends less time on going to the doctor. Really, when you're just cutting little little things out of your life that. Well, ninety five percent of our health. I'm not sure if I mentioned that statistic earlier, but 95% of our health is determined by our lifestyle. It's 5% is genetics. Mm -hmm. And that's what most people are hung up about. But our lifestyle choices are exercise, sleep, nutrition, our stress management, nutrition, and these environmental factors. 95% of our health we have absolute control over, which is exciting and empowering, but a responsibility too. Right. And doing, you know, maybe a little research and yeah, like really you have more control than you might think to, to change things in your life and, and your health for yourself, your family and everybody. I didn't know it was 95%. Um, Mm -hmm. This shaman that I um, have been taking classes from, he even talks about, you actually have even more control over the genetics part too, to be honest is mm-hmm. that when you start doing shamanic healings and working in that realm is that um there's things that might sit in your field generational diseases personal diseases right they'll sit in your field and you can actually heal yourself in the field even if something you can you can heal that generational curse if you will or that generational lineage of something and it might be sitting in your field, like a little dark spot and you can actually heal it before it comes. You choose if you want to take that genetic curse on or that, that thing that's been said in your family that everybody has, that is your choice. If you allow it to go further into your feet, into your field, actually into your being, you can actually heal it before it even reaches you. That is a personal choice that you do. So in, in, in respects to that, after I learned that recently, we have a hundred percent control over our health and, and how we want to heal and how we want to be on this planet. Mm-hmm. It really is up to us when you, you can yeah. fully take control of all the levels. On a physical, on a physical um, realm, I just read the Mark, the Dr. Mark Hyman book, what mm-hmm. the food, what the heck should I eat? Okay. And he talked about how different food there, he talked about research about how different foods could turn off or on genetic factors. Wow. Mm -hmm. And on an emotional level, if you saw a big smile come across my face when you were talking about about the the energy, (laughs) the first event that I went to with Young Living when I was seeing if it was a company I wanted to be aligned with um, to share (laughs) was an emotional release workshop with with Dr. Gary Young. And I didn't know who this guy was, but boy, was his energy field big. And he led us through these incredible emotional releases with the oils and doing mapping. And it was, it was so powerful. I may have thrown up on the way home. You had something to purge out there. You had some stuck energy. I may like. not have said that to other people, uh, but I know that you understand. Um, I know that you understand. Yeah, I that's mean, a definite huge energetic purge. Wow. Huge energetic yeah. purge. So that was interesting, but, and, uh, but I don't want to scare anybody out there. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, no, but in, 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 in regards to that though, uh, everyone has everyone has a different reaction to things. Mm -hmm. So, and and at different times. So like, you know, someone might just ball their eyes out. Someone actually might leave just 
giggling, laughing, and their energetic release comes in the form of laughter. Like we, we all have a different way and in where the state of where you are at. Like I just went to a chiropractor last week for the first time in like seven years. And after I got out of there and she was like one of the best chiropractors I've ever been to so gentle and her adjusting, you're like, Oh, did you even just, you know, I'm waiting for my neck to almost fall off and my head to roll away. And I thought for sure I was going to die that first day because I hadn't been adjusted in so long. And I left and I'm like driving home and I just start bawling. Not about anything. It's just, that was in that day, that was that energetic release. And then I just went yesterday and then the energetic release from that, it was like, it was, it was that kind of euphoric laughter. Like I was like more like in the clouds, but that's just another form of energetic release of energy, you know? So yeah, you're not scaring anyone. It's just <laughs> for you that day, you needed to purge something and it brought up some stuck energy. It, it, it was a three hour event of smelling oils and going deep into emotional. Mm-hmm pathways. Wow. But I will share this and I will make it FDA compliant in this way. I will not, I will not say what specific oil um, is very high in sesquiterpenes, but what I learned, for example, I learned a lot in that workshop is sesquiterpenes erase miswritten DNA, including epigenetically the emotional patterns we may have carried through our genetic line for up to seven generations. Oh my God. I just got like, so, okay. I'm having an emotional release right now because I just got like really excited and I want to cry all at the same time. And <laughs> you can't say that what that is though right now. Well, for me to stay FDA compliant, yeah, I understand. That. I, I could talk about the different compounds within the oils, but not yeah. talk about the oils themselves. So if I were to say this oil is really high in sesquiterpenes, so then I'll be really interested in this specific oil compounds configuration, then I will say, reach out to us. <laughs> of or just give it a Google. Or give it a Google. That's what it Google. means. Essential oils, which ones are high? Give it a Google. I can't, I may, I can't keep you from getting your own information. No, I'd like to lead can. you to your own education for I sure. I can't keep you from calling me later and asking me what this is <laughs> or sending me a message. But this is absolutely, you have no idea. This like just went next level for me. Um, because We're there. I know. yeah, uh, there's things I can't talk about right now on this show also for my own compliancy. Um, but I can't wait to tune into this because this is all part of something I'm working on that mm -hmm. I actually can't discuss yet. Uh, at all. um, but I want you to keep going on this. This is going to be going into my file as something I'm working on, um, that my guides have secretly no one really knows i'm only a handful of people really know i'm mm. i'm i'm doing this um but this actually i didn't even know this this is really actually kind of brilliant aligns with something i'm secretly working on for the time being keep going about that so the sesquiterpenes erase miswritten dna and then the monoterpenes rewrite the miswritten DNA. And he was teaching us all of this in relation to our emotions, although it absolutely is relevant to our physical manifestations of our DNA as well. Wow. But the that emotional release experience. Because you're carrying things on. I mean, are you familiar with the fact that... Um, like we're, when you're in the womb, you're actually like, you have all of your eggs, mm -hmm. right? And your mother has all of her eggs. And when your mother's in the grandmother's room, she has all of her eggs. So the actually the amount of information that is passed through women and held in our bodies from, I think, I believe it's four generations back because all the eggs that we'll ever have, like men reproduce their sperm, all the eggs we're ever gonna have are with us from the moment we're growing in the womb and we're in the womb with all of our mothers. You know what I mean? Like, so just that, that there's something that emotionally, like if your grandmother had a very traumatic life that she did not heal before conception with your mother, 
your mother will pick up energetically within her structure, all of that trauma. And if your mother does not heal that now generational wound and her own wounds that she might've picked up on, right? She now is passing all of that information onto you. Now, if you go through life and you don't heal your, let's say great grandmother's wounds, your grandmother's wounds, your mother's wounds, and now your own wounds that you have t- you've brought, because if you're carrying wounds, you're gonna attract more wounds, right? Because you're unconscious to it all. And you get pregnant with a daughter. It, the energy goes to the son too, but especially with the daughter. Now she's carrying. So when all of us are walking around a lot of times in our life and we don't know why we're sad, we don't know what's wrong with us. A lot of it isn't even ours. We're carrying other people's shit. They say something in the Bible too, that if you're, I don't, cause I don't read the Bible. I don't really know the Bible, but people tell me Bible things all the time. So you can't quote me on the specifics, but if you know the Bible and you know this, you'll know what I'm talking about, or you can even look it up. Um, Is that, and they talk about this in shamanic work too. The sins of your grandfather, you'll be paying for the sins of your grandfather. You'll be paying for the sin. And that goes to your ancestral lineage as well. The ancestral curses, the blah, blah, blah. Whatever karmas you do in your life today and you extend your life, being through having children if they're not healed properly and dealt with properly your great great grandchild could be picking up on that karma that they now are being plagued with to have to deal with so my whole point in saying all of this is heal yourself number one number two the fact that there's something that can help aid in the release in the generational curses, in the generational traumas, in the generational things is absolutely mind blowing. And one of the most beautiful things I've heard in a really long time that there's an aid on this planet that is a physical thing to help in that process. Because I think that is so incredibly important and so incredibly like something to people that don't walk a spiritual path or that deep of a spiritual path yet, or have an understanding or read the Bible, like they're carrying. So it just breaks my heart of like how much they're carrying that is not theirs. Amen. And if there's a, another tool to help in that process, holy shit, that's so fucking beautiful. Amen. So beautiful. (laughs) Now I have the shivers. I actually put some oil <laughs> on the base of my spine. I'm like, I'm going to ground that in there. Whew. That's so beautiful. said. And as far as what these substances have to offer us, I mean, it's interesting because essential oils have been referenced since the beginning of our, of our written history throughout, throughout the Bible, mm-hmm. throughout Egypt. And they've also usually been referenced in combination with prayer, which we could get into in just a moment as well. But Wayne Dyer spoke at our convention before he passed. And he said at our our convention, he said, I don't take speaking engagements anymore. I do my PBS specials. I may take one engagement a year and I get hundreds of invitations. And he said that he chose to come to our convention because he believed that these little bottles were the highest vibration frequency on the planet and that it was up to us to introduce them to people to help them change their lives. Wow. Wow. (laughs) And it's interesting. I... I was, I was raised Catholic and I, I was friends with sister Grace who died just a couple of years ago in her late nineties. We, we shared the same birthday. I don't know how we continued to stay friends. Um, but when I told her, she'd always asked me what I was doing. And when I told her, I started working with essential oils. She got very serious 
which would happen once in a while. She said, are you using them with prayer? Mm. And it took me back a little bit because she was, she went to a very serious realm. But as I got more involved, I understood that using them with intention is extremely powerful and how they enhance intention or prayer and the prayer is enhanced by the oils or Reiki or whatever energy work you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, if you're interested in this at all, Dr. David Stewart wrote two incredible books in particular, The Chemistry of Essential Oils, which is like the Vistic and Mind Imploding. <laughs> um, and he also wrote the scriptural oils of the Bible or the oils of the Bible. But I watched him on a documentary about essential oils talking about how essential oils are in the quantum field. We might measure a few of the compounds that are, that are prominent in oils to say, oh, they might be helpful in supporting this system or helpful in supporting this, but they have hundreds of compounds, every single oil. And most of the compounds we don't measure or pay attention to, or even know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. He said, and in that realm, the oil could be anything you need it to be. If you just ask. Wow. Dr. David Stewart. Wow. He just passed away, I think, in the past year or two. He has left us with a wealth of knowledge around essential oils, chemistry, and spirituality. Wow. I know even just in, in the shamanic world of plant journeying, I mean, there's something to be said as we get back into nature, get back into, into plants and flowers and all these things that even in that, if you're going to go in a ceremonial journey is just simply asking for what you want out of that journey and you will get it. Mm -hmm. It's like it, the symbiotic relationship that we can have with these things is so beautiful and so like, you know, lost knowledge to the masses in a sense, you know, it's like stumbling, like, I didn't know that a year ago with plant medicine and ceremony. Like I was just a young kid, like, well, the first time I took mushrooms, like, ah, you know, not knowing, no, you can set intention. Like you want to know something you want to, it, it, it's a guide, it's a gateway, you know, it's a, once again, we can, we can be so much more empowered and not powerless in this journey that to even knowing that is so beautiful. Like you can, you know, like, what do I want this? I'm obsessed with this spot, by the way, this deep relief oil that you put on your temples in the back. Um, what do I, what, what do I want this? I've been actually not even knowing that asking that to help me with my neck tension. Mm -hmm. And it has, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm, I'm just like every day, I'm like, I, I have it on my coffee table. So I'm like, la, 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 moving on, you know, but we already talked when I got it, um, you know, or the one, you know, this that helps me balance some things out. And, uh, <laughs> but that's really cool to know that, to know that that is a real thing. That is a thing. That is something you can do. It's like, you know, we can ask for help even to something that you wouldn't think you could ask for help for that will help you on such a, like, yeah, on a quantum field, on a bigger field, on in bigger ways than you could even imagine. Like that's, oh, it's like- just I love spirituality meets science in this earthy way. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's really exciting it's and beautiful. it's really magical and it's really real and it's so much discredited, you know? Um, but I feel like a lot of things that are discredited is something you actually want to look deeper into. Why is that all of a sudden discredited or why are they trying so hard to discredit it or give it a bad name? You know, mm -hmm. um, what's in it? What's, what's a deeper thing that's kind of hidden? And I feel like you just revealed something that is a reason why it would, you know, um, 
in this movement of, of essential oils? Because I feel like, what would you say? I would say in the past decade, essential oils have really came on the scene a little <laughs> bit more than before, like a little bit more like a household name, if you will, you know? Right. When I started with Young Living, people would say, well, what's an essential oil? <laughs> but now it's, oh, what oil, what oils do you use? Yeah. But um, Young Living is absolutely attributed to this renaissance. They're a 26-year-old company as of now in 2021. And the founder is the one that did the, the legwork to learn how to distill an oil properly it's an art and really keep this like ancient knowledge going and teaching and mm -hmm. keeping it alive and not just getting buried with you know so many other things that we no longer know about because the teaching wasn't kept going and it was really apparently world war one that stopped the use of essential oils because trade routes were shut down. So that's when they started synthetically making the compounds for different substances because we couldn't get we couldn't get the products. By the time the war was over, there was already such an industry. They didn't go back to the natural ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, the natural ways have been being slowly cut out throughout a lot of time. I feel and like they're coming back now. They're coming back with a vengeance now. They really are. They've they really never been are. more needed. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, I know you wanted to touch on before we go into the into the into the last little segment that we wanted to talk about, um essential oils and pets. I know you wanted to talk about that and do a little myth busting on that or the importance of, you know, all of it. Well, I think that's the number one question I get. Are they safe for my pets? And I'm thrilled that people ask that because I think it's a gateway to start asking the questions of exactly what we've been talking about. If you're concerned about if this essential oil is safe for your pets, let's look at your cleaning products, what colognes and perfumes you're using, what other things that you're exposing them to on a daily basis. Because I know you were talking about what bleach does to your nose, we have one olfactory sense like center cats and dogs like have hundreds mm -hmm. well i know dogs do cats may not have hundreds but they definitely have more <laughs> but so something that ammonia or something like that that all of a sudden we can't smell after um a certain amount of time they may be able to smell for days and days but more so than the smell they're being affected by the chemical itself so I know I've cleaned with substances in the past and in closed areas where I've literally gotten sick. Mm -hmm. I've painted with things where I've literally had like to sleep for the whole next 24 hours. So I don't even know what's in some of these things. So I'm thrilled the conversation comes up, to be honest, because even if they never use an essential oil, I want them to start thinking about what other products are in their home for their pet's health, because so often I have people that come to me and their animals have skin issues. How many people do you know who spend hundreds of dollars on different foods and things like that for allergies for their animals? Mm -hmm. And I'm not making any claims with my company. I'm just saying when they've switched out their laundry detergents, the stuff they spray their couches with, the things that the dogs are laying on goes away. Wow after hundreds of dollars where nothing else worked because some of the toxic things in our homes are our air fresheners, our candles mm -hmm. and our laundry detergents and dryer fabric softeners and things like that. So just cutting those things out, whether it's for yourself, for your kids, for your pets, and it's cheaper too. Just get those little wool dryer balls. Right. <laughs> the little woolly ones great you can put oils on them or not it's great <laughs> so they say with different there's different for cats and dogs alike there's different essential oils out there that are toxic for them is that true and or does that fall in the category that some of these companies that are putting out these essential oils are using synthetic ingredients so it's actually that's what's more toxifying for your pet than if you were to align with a company that's making pure oils 
in most cases, it's a quality issue. I'm saying in most cases, it is a quality issue where, where exactly what they're getting in a bottle is not pure. And of course, our animals are even more sensitive than we are, and they could have a reaction. I'll have a reaction when I, if I smell something that's not pure, nonetheless, use it. Um, often it's them using an oil improperly. So you'll see the wintergreen bottle from Young Living has like a childproof cap on it. Some people have said it's because it smells like root beer. So you want to make sure they don't drink it. But I know there's been instances where someone has drank an entire bottle of wintergreen and now all of a sudden wintergreen stocks. Of course, anything in that high of concentration is not okay. So there's a lot of common sense that comes into, into play here. So I have used all of the essential oils from Young Living with cats, dogs, horses, cows, <laughs> um, animals of many species. And they've been using um, the essential oils with, with animals for over their 20 year um, legacy safely. So it is often a quality issue. I am not qualified to say that tea tree oil is not toxic to, to pet to cats. I've used, I've diffused it around my cat. She <sighs> essential oils, I think, added some time that I my cat had a lot of issues and um, and pharmaceuticals weren't working. Mm -hmm. And I think I got a lot more years out of my, out of out of my time with her because I started using using essential oils with her to support her and changing her food and cleaning, cleaning up my act and my home differently. But yeah, I, I encourage people to stay conservative with the list that's out there for avoiding cats with dogs with pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Just stay conservative. Although I know many people that have used them throughout pregnancy with you know, different species of animals just fine with young living as far as the quality goes, but use, make your own decisions. Right. There's a wonderful book out there, um, ADR, the Animal Desk Reference. It's, you could get it through Amazon. It's by a holistic vet, ADR, and it's full of information. So you could I'll feel comfortable. Yeah, I'll put the, everything you're mentioning, I'll put links in the show notes for. Great. I'll, I'll yeah. get links to all of it, but you could get, I want you to get your own information. I want you to have your own education. So you feel confident in whatever your choices are mm -hmm. and make the choices that are best for you. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But as far as using animals, um, using oils with pets, young, you asked what other lines Young Living has. They have lines specifically for pets and specifically for small kids and babies. Although you could use all of the oils they always have with babies and pets and animals and kids, diluting them as necessary. So a lot of these are pre-mixed for things that they might they might, might want them for. So of course, for kids, they have tummy jies or sleepy eyes or genius. So, you know, for your you need a little belly love or if you want help with your studying and focus or if you want to help get a better night's sleep they've made cute blends that are specific for many of the needs for kids and animals are very sim um, similar but you could use the full strength oils but I have a whole um I have a whole video on animal aromatherapy if you want me to share that link to just as far as dilution ratios and how to introduce an oil properly to um to your home so that you give a very good first experience I love that <laughs> because remember they're so sensitive and I mean they'll know that a bottle of oil is in the house if it's just cracked open like that you don't need to put it underneath their nose it's gonna make them sneeze we just have one olfactory center. I'm good having that underneath my nose. But if you put that underneath your dog's nose, he's going to be sneezing and probably run away every time you go to open up a bottle for the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. I mean, right? I have this like um, this spray that I put on her before the park. And she if I just spray her butt, she literally runs and it's for ticks. 
and smashes her face in the ground. And I actually never realized what that, I'm like, but I'm putting it on your butt. Why are you spazzing out, smashing your face in the ground? Oh, you just told me why. Interesting. Amazing. I love her. <laughs> um, and with, with humans and animals, there's a lot of safety around using the oils topically, mm -hmm. aromatically, and you could also use these oils in many cases internally. So obviously we're talking about very different standards than perfume oils that you might find you know, in, a, in a more conventional store. So right. we could go into that and it's a whole other hour or I could just you know share some links with information about the safety of all of that as well, whatever is best for you. I think we you. should definitely do an, another episode going mm -hmm. deeper. I think you know that would be really fun. And for now we could do links for people. Um, and I want to encourage you also, I'll put Melissa's contact information in the show notes as I always do with my guests um, to, if it's okay with you for them to reach out to you with any questions. Absolutely. Um, and I love, I love, one of the things I love the most about Young Living is I've met people that I would have never met otherwise. And I've become friends, lifelong friends with some people I would have never met otherwise. So I love setting up times to talk and um, yeah. connect or text back and forth or whatnot. But I'm excited to help people with whatever their wellness goals are for themselves or their family, furry family members, whatever it is. Um, I love just helping them, whether it's an oil or whether it's a yoga breathing exercise or <laughs> whether it's some kind of mindset tool. I love every aspect of empowering lifestyle. So I can't wait to, to connect if you would like to. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah. And like I said, her, her information will be in the show notes. Um, let's close it out. I have about 15 minutes left here before I have to uh, mosey on my day. We wanted to talk about oils and vibration. Do, do we do we have enough time to to do a little a little digging into that? Because I think this is yes. absolutely fascinating. I think it'll tie up a lot of what we've talked about on every level. <laughs> but the best way that I've had it explained to me is that if you have two guitars, you know, laying up against a wall and you pluck the A string of one the A string of the other one will start to vibrate. Mm. So when we're using an essential oil that right now I won't give any numbers, but is, a, is of a very high frequency and we're having it around us, diffusing it, putting it on us. What is that? What effect is that having on our energy field? So if everything is energy, if everything is vibration. Which it is. <laughs> And these are some of the highest vibrational substances on the planet, which I'll give some numbers in just a moment. Imagine just those benefits of infusing them into our lives in different ways, whether it's just for emotional wellness, physical wellness, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I love talking about antioxidants. Um, we won't get into this today, but you could research the ORAC value, O-R-A-C, if you've never heard of it of different, um, mostly herbs are very high in the antioxidant um, ORAC values. So cinnamon, clove, and you know, you would need a lot of, a lot of that powder to, to, get, um, to get into your system. Mm -hmm. One drop of peppermint oil is equivalent to 28 bags of peppermint tea. So when you're looking at a bottle of clove or a bottle of cinnamon or a bottle of thieves that have both clove and cinnamon in them, that's a lot of substance you're getting in a very small amount. So I have a little graph that we could share in the link of different vibrational frequencies. For example, the cold or the flu, our body is at a vibration is at a body a vibration of fifty eight or fifty seven. The onset of death is twenty five. <laughs> Canned wow. or processed food is zero, zero. While fresh produce up to fifteen, up to fifteen, and we're talking we're talking about megahertz here. Um, dry herbs twelve to twenty two, fresh herbs twenty to twenty seven. 
and then essential oils range anywhere from from the high 70s to over 300 428 is the highest one I found so far so wow well I everybody thinks rose is the highest vibrational and I used to think that too at 320 that's a lot Idaho blue spruce is 428 now of course we're talking about pure properly grown harvested and distilled oils so say that one again that's 428 Idaho blue spruce oh Mm -hmm. it's very grounding yes (laughs) high vibration but grounding interesting Mm -hmm. white angelica which i may have seen me put on this is 89 this is one of my favorite oils that i use for my energy fields um especially if i'm going to be around other people or doing or receiving any kind of energy work they definitely say it expands the electromagnetic fields and um and as somebody who's very empathetic, it's really nice to have that extra little buffer yeah. <laughs> because the world could be exhausting as an empath. But lavender um, is a little over 100. So in comparison to the fresh herbs and the dry herbs of 12 to 27, we're getting into some very high frequencies here. Wow. Mm-hmm. I wonder, I want to know, let me see, uh, 428. I'm going to see what, do you know 428, what scale it's on Silfeggio frequencies at all? Ooh, I do not. Sheila would probably, Sheila would know because she plays those Salvaggio singing um, Trying to see if it just interesting. Success and abundance frequency is 428. Wow. So you could couple that oil with listening. You can just um, go on YouTube, put Solfeggio frequencies or type in 428 frequencies, and you could couple that with that oil. And you're really, and, and you could even focus on or ask it to pull in, what did I say? Success and abundance. Mm-hmm. You're going to be raising your vibration even higher in alignment with, with that. So you can find, um, you could couple these, these frequencies with music and you would be, mm-hmm. you would be amplifying them even higher. I'm called to just mention something that seems off topic, but maybe a nice something for someone listening, talking about music and vibration and even what you were talking about as far as the four generations of women and what we pass down um, to our children. In one of my yoga trainings and Kundalini yoga training, they talked a lot about that. Um, And they had specific mantras to listen to while you were pregnant for Mm. those reasons. And I just thought I would mention that listening to different frequencies or mantra music when you're sleeping, if you don't already do it, even if it's inaudible, Mm -hmm. even if you have something else on and it's, and it's underneath that is something you might want to add into your, your daily or evening bedtime regimen. I listen to Kundalini mantras, um, all night long. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. But those frequencies you're talking about, I mean, that's when our subconscious is wide open. So it's so important. Ready to receive. Mm-hmm. And we, ha- and that's another reason to be sure to not listen to the news or have anything disturbing before you go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually used to watch the show Frasier. Like I've seen <laughs> the entire 10 season series like a hundred times because it was like, something I needed to like wind my brain down a little bit, but it was mm-hmm. such a pure show. It Aww. wasn't adding anything weird in before I went to bed because mm-hmm. it's just so clean. Like even the jokes are clean. The storylines are clean. It's not, you know, and his voice is so soothing that he would just like calm me down. But it, it is very important. They say, don't be on your phone or your computer an hour before bed because of the blue light. It messes with your brain and it thinks that then it's awake time and be very mindful of what you like, don't fall asleep with the TV on with the news. You know, this is a great alternative. If you need something in the background is filling your 
your subconscious with high vibrational music. There's even, yeah, there's even like, um, you can also listen to on YouTube, like, you know, they'll like do some success, like, like mantras or, you know what I mean? Like to, to really plug in abundance things. You can find all this stuff that you can run for your night's sleep. Um, but it's also what you wake up in the morning to as well and not just bombarding mm -hmm. yourself, you know, is there any uh, oils that are good upon awaking that you could bring into your waking up I'm, to this world? I wrote a blog recently about bookends and getting a good night's sleep and how important it is to have some kind of routine, whatever it is. And so in the evening, a lot of people do gratitude journals or some kind of meditation. Um, and so, of course, I, I diffuse every evening and sometimes I change it up. But in the morning, I have a script that I read and I always use an oil in combination with it. Okay. So, I mean, there's so many and I usually just use whatever, whatever I'm called to because <laughs> I have, as you can see, my show, yes. <laughs> I have a lot of options, Lethra. <laughs> but, um, and also what we were talking about earlier, any oil will do what we, what we're intentioning if we, if we ask it. So there's so many beautiful oils. Um, I. I scanned recently for inspiration. So I've been using that. Um, but very often I'll, I'll do surrender or the white Angelica. I, every day I start with valor, like no matter what else mm. I do, I always use valor. Always. It's very grounding. It's energetically balancing. I, it's good for courage and confidence. It lets me just jump about the day with vigor. Hmm. <laughs> But I've also anchored myself to that. Mm -hmm. So I know, um, I know sometimes we talk about anchors and if you're doing, and anchors are something that you do in neuro-linguistic programming. Tony Robbins talks about it a lot. Um, when I used to do body work for people, I would very, as I started using essential oils, I would choose a scent for them. We would choose it together very often. And then I would maybe send them home with a couple drops in a little bottle. So they could get back into the state they were in when we did the body work more oh, easily. Oh, yeah. So if you have some kind, if you have an anchor of an affirmation to specific oils, like I used Believe before we got on, on the phone because it was part of my regimen for years of just being really grounded and mm -hmm. self-worth and empowered that that was the intention behind this, but I've also anchored that in and used it during those times. So there's an oil for everything. There's an oil for everything. <laughs> and it's so multifaceted, like so, and that's why I, I really was excited to do the show with you because it's, it's so, and I feel like we just, I feel like we barely even scratched the surface so far, but there's so much more to it than dropping a few drops in your bathtub of lavender oil, you know, and I, I would love us to come together again in a few weeks and, and go even deeper. And in, 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 in what we, what we feel like comes up in the next few weeks that we want to talk about or venture into, um, because it's, it's a beautiful world that I thank you for introducing me to. And I don't even feel like I've for myself scratch the surface yet you know um melissa has this amazing scanner can we talk about the scanner oh that's how i, I think i may have mentioned that i i scanned yeah, for, the, for the inspiration yeah and yes i love i use the little itovi scanner and it just helps recommend oils or supplements that will help your body be at its best how's that for fda compliance right <laughs> And it's just this tiny little scanner that you, it's one hand, right? That you hold in your hand. Mm -hmm. um, you've done it to me twice now. And that's how I fell upon the, the deep relief here because that came out as my second one as a suggestion for me. And it was like so on point because I was having all these neck um, issues and stress and stuff. And so coupling this with going to the chiropractor now, because I think I met with you a week or two right before I um, went to the chiropractor like this and like, by the time I ordered it and came and I started going to the chiropractor, this has like been such a perfect complement to this healing I've been doing. Um, but yeah, it was the scanner that I don't know if I would have 
you know, necessarily this would have been on my radar as the next oil to buy without scanning in to see where my levels are at. And what's interesting is the first time you scanned me, I feel like it was, when, when do we get together with, um, at Sheila's when we first did the scanning, was that in like- Maybe right after the new year or no, before that. Before that, maybe it was like October. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I had, and like so much has changed since in a different season and everything. So to be scanned in one time of the year and see what was coming up then, and then to be scanned after a lot of healings happened, a lot of different, like it was interesting to see what has shifted which is amazing mm -hmm. too, um, but still like right on point for the new time. Like that's what's really cool about the scanner too is it's so on point of what it comes up in the properties of what it's suggesting for you to bring in. And if you really look at what's going on in your life, it's, it, it, it's, it's crazy. It's really beautiful. It, it always surprises me. I scanned myself the other day um, because I was coming off of some pretty intense dehydration um, that I, I'm like, I should just scan myself to see what's going on. I, I did not adult very well before a hike. It was totally my fault, <laughs> but yeah. I did all the things and I, um, and I scanned myself thinking certain things might come up. It was all emotional things for focus. <laughs> it was wow. nothing for the physical body. It was yeah, all nothing emotional. for your <laughs> lack of hydration. Well, I had I think I had taken care of everything by that point, yeah. but um, it was mostly all for focus and inspiration was number one. Wow. And I've been very productive since then. <laughs> Usually what I think is going to come up or what I need is, is not what comes up. And I, I appreciate it helping me see my blind spots. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's to me, that's what I tell people with tarot card readings, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, what I think is a misconception with tarot is like this prediction aspect. And I say, no, it's more of just showing you visually where you're at and what mm -hmm. your blind spots are and what are you not looking at? And like, we're wanting life to go in a certain way or wanting something to be a certain thing. But then these things come up as modalities to be like, no, this is, you're missing this. Like, this is what's actually needed, needing to be shown. So that's really cool that that's the scanner has, does that ability as well to just show you like, no, this is where you're a little bit off. And then, you know, we can realign and it's, it's the constant realignment back to center is what keeps us in our most peak state and balanced. Dropping some TR in there. <laughs> For those of you just listening, I'm raising the roof. Nice yeah. Well, I thank you so much for sitting down with us today and sharing the so much of your knowledge and I do want to do this again with you and go deeper further in whatever path it go takes us on the next time because like I said I feel like we just scratched the surface and I'm excited I mean maybe it's a it's a you know a completely selfish thing that I just want to learn more so I'm gonna bring you back to, to teach me to teach <laughs> me more about this world that I, I really essentially um, haven't really known much about. So, and you know, it would be fun if we are going to do another one in a few weeks, if anyone listens to this, um, between now and then, and doesn't already have young living lavender frankincense and stress away. If you want to reach out to me, I could send you a little, a little thing so you could smell them and we could start our session next time with a little mini aroma freedom technique reset really beautiful experience the oils in that way i have to say this comes with when you uh when you sign up with young living to make it a business you get this as a gift and i didn't know what to think when it came in the mail and the smell of this i think mm -hmm. i told you since day one like i want to eat it i'm obsessed yeah. with it <laughs> and i like I can't, I really can't get enough of it. Like there's something in here. I think it's the lime and vanilla. I think, mm -hmm. I think it's that like the combo of that. Um, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like pretty phenomenal. I love stress away. I love stress away. I love stress. It's my, away. 
favorite to diffuse when I'm in the car. Mm. Most people that know me might not know that that's where I have the least, the second least amount of patients, technology and then the car. And then the car. <laughs> so I preventively diffuse very often when I'm in the car, <laughs> which is great for me. kids too. If you're doing rides with, um, with furry family members that might not like the car as well. Diffusing stress away is Ooh. wonderful and peace and calm those are my two favorite but peace and calm gets me a little too calm and I want to be more alert so I don't do that when I'm driving I've anchored myself why to, does that not surprise me <laughs> I've anchored myself to the peace and calm before bed so I yeah I, I smell that not and I know every every cell of my body knows it's time for a deep restful sleep <laughs> I know I'm a very sensitive being but I think you're one of like the most energetically sensitive I think you have me beat and I'm pretty energetically sensitive but like you being that ether being that we were talking about in the game of alchemy I I mm -hmm. you're probably one of the most energetically sensitive people that I've that I've met like for instance um one of her friends gave her her first sound bath one day and I don't, were we going to get together? We were like, just going to try to figure out plans. And you're like, I can't right now. I just came out of the sound bath and I'm in another realm. <laughs> and I'll get pretty out there, but I can ground a little bit, you know, if, if, if something needs to not, not Melissa, like if she's out there, you got to call her tomorrow because there is no bringing, there's no reining her in. There is going like, for a ride in the ether and we'll just talk later so I could totally see how that central oil in your driving is not a good idea <laughs> I'll end with this they say some because this is very curious they say that sometimes if you don't like the smell of an oil you need it and Ooh. I didn't believe that at all I'm like that's weird until I smelled the grounding oil <laughs> Like, this is terrible get it away from me so because you gave that little um insight to me and my energy field yeah that was wow. a fun time to put that in there <laughs> that's actually how i learned muscle testing one of my friends he um because i've heard of muscle testing right and i might have done it here and there but i was like he's i looked at him as more of like an expert of muscle testing i'm like will you properly teach me so I know exactly what we're doing. Will you muscle test with me? And he's like, I'll be right back. And he, and he leaves the room and he comes back with this plastic bag. I'm like, I don't have any idea what's going on. And he's like, I'm not going to show you it is, but close your eyes. And um, he pulls, he starts to pull something out of the bag and he won't let me see it. He has me close it, my eyes. He puts this little bottle of liquid into my hand. Right. And then he pushes down my arm. And my arm like, or no, first he has me just focus. Cause he's like, you're supposed to wipe your brain. Like, don't even think of anything and just for, like align to it intuition wise, if this is good or bad for you. And then he presses my arm and my arm, you know, moves. Then he goes into his bag and he, or like, no, it wasn't good or bad. It was like, if you have a resistance or you're accepting to it. Right. And then he goes into the bag. Cause if, well, I'll tell you in a minute. And then he does the same thing with another thing. And I was like, the second one, I had, um, I had such a resistance to it. I was like, oh, and the first one I was like, oh, well, what I was shown was it was the opposite of what you might think. The thing that I had the resistance to was the thing that was good for me and that my arm didn't move. And the thing that I didn't have an energetic resistance to that my arm moved to was the thing that I wasn't supposed to have. So one of them was alcohol. One of the bottles was clear alcohol and the other one was water. Wow. And I had a resistance to the water and he's like, that's your gauge. <laughs> so you can see even with the oils is the one you need, the one you have the most resistance to mm -hmm. is the one in that moment with the oil is the one you need. So makes a lot of sense. Off topic, but if anyone is interested in helping their kids see exactly what you just talked about with the foods they eat. The nonprofit that I work with, um, we did a whole episode on kinesiology testing food items. So they Ooh. pick food items from their house or you pick them or whatnot and they're in paper bags so they can't see what they are. And it goes through teaching you how to kinesiology test one another so they could feel which ones they test strong for or weak for and then open the bag and all the processed foods were things that they tested weak for and all the water and 
whole foods and raw foods are things that their body's stronger with. Wow. Yes. There's something to all that's really awesome. <laughs> I love that oils play play into the exact thing. I mean, why wouldn't they? They're high vibrational and they're in the quantum field. So they they completely align with the whole thing, but that's a that's really cool. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. And like I said, let's do this again in a few weeks and dig even deeper. And um, yeah, it's been so fun. It's always good. I look so forward to it. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest (laughs) of your day. Bye. Bye.